if you start BSing or start pulling things out of a hat, he's going to know that. This is his job. And he will lead you down a rabbit hole that is more and more and more wrong. Hello again, everyone. My name is Bryce. I am an AMP IA with about 10 years experience in general aviation, and I have currently been teaching full time at a part 147 school. I've gotten a couple questions about testing with your DME or taking your oral and practical test to get your airframe and power plant certification. So I thought I would make a video and clarify some of that. So at this point, you should have already taken your written test and you should already be at the point where you are ready to schedule your O&P. I would hope that you've maybe studied some of the material, but maybe you don't know what to study yet. So the first thing that you need to do is call that DME and have a conversation. And the conversation should go something like this. The first thing you should do is obviously confirm his availability and that you will be able to test when you wish to test. But a lot of people don't know this or they're scared to ask. You can ask the DME what you should study. So my first question would be, what oral questions are you going to use or what oral questions would you suggest that I look at? Jeppesen puts out oral questions, so does ASA, so Prepware is ASA, but Prepware and many other places. So you're going to want to ask your DME what oral questions you should be looking at. That way, when you sit in front of him, you are getting the questions that he is probably going to use. I've, we know a couple of DMEs that, I, I won't say work with the school, because they don't really work with us, but our students go to them regularly. And some DMEs prefer Jeppesen, some DMEs prefer Prepware. So ask him that question. And the second question should be, what equipment do you have and what airplane do you have? Now I'll admit, not every DME is going to have an airplane. Some of them might just have trainers, but if he has a Piper Cherokee or a Cessna 150, you might wanna know that. Same with whatever kind of turbine engine he may have. You can ask him, what kind of equipment do you have? And then go to my personal favorite tool as an aircraft mechanic, which is Google, and find out as much information as you can about that equipment so that you have a little bit of knowledge going into it on what you're going to be working on and what the certain systems are on that engine or that turbine or that airframe, whatever it may be. So you've called the DME and you've asked him what to study and you've asked him what kind of equipment he has had. At this point, you need to study those oral questions on flashcards or whatever you have to do until you know them like the back of your hand. If you do that, when you go through your oral part of your test, you will breeze through it and it will be very, very easy. But what about the practicals? Well, you can go to the FAA website and put in the search bar, Airman Certification Standards and press enter and the ACS standards of what a DME can test you on will come up. For each section, they will have a series of tasks, level one, two, and three, that a DME might give you on a practical project. Now, I'll be honest, if you're lucky, you get a lot of level one tasks, which is just knowledge or identify. If you're unlucky, you might get a lot of level three tasks which are actually having to perform things like having to perform a sheet metal repair or having to perform a compression check. What's a good way to prepare for the tasks? Well, that's a question you have to ask yourself. On every single ACS task that you read, you do need to understand that that is a testable task that you may get on your test. So read through them and think to yourself, can I figure this out with a manual? and or have I done this when I was in school? And the manual part is important. Some of these tasks you might not have seen before, but on every single task with your DME, you need to ask for a procedure or go and find a procedure for the work you are going to be doing. What you don't wanna do is when he says, service that nose tire or connect the tow bar, you don't wanna just go put, put a bunch of air in it or go connect the tow bar because you've done it before. Even if it's as simple as opening the POH, where the POH says, connect tow bar, your DME is going to want to see you using procedures, which should take a little bit of a load off your shoulders as far as the practicals go, because if you have to have a procedure and he has to provide a procedure, there should be something in writing that you can follow that should make that just a little bit easier. This may sound weird, but the next thing that you should do is relax. 
the DME is not here to fail you. He's here to make sure that you are competent at being an aircraft mechanic. You don't want to work yourself up and give yourself an anxiety attack. So, whatever you do, you need to have all of your studying done before you go test. When you go test that day, do not look at any of your materials, take a good night's sleep, and relax. When you go into the test, you should go into the test fresh and with a good breakfast in your stomach. Many DMEs have told us that people will come in to take their test, they didn't sleep all night, they stayed up studying all night, they came in without eating any breakfast and had drank a whole bunch of Red Bull and were so, so nervous that every time he asked them a question, they were like, uh, 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 I don't know. So get yourself a good night's rest, eat a good breakfast, and relax. My second part to that is not to BS the DME. If you are not sure about something, tell him you are not sure or you don't know. If it's a practical, you're allowed to use books and ask questions. The oral, you can't. But on a practical, just tell him, ooh, I don't know. Let me find that in the book for you real quick. If you start BSing or start pulling things out of a hat, he's going to know that. This is his job. And he will lead you down a rabbit hole that is more and more and more wrong. So if you don't know the answer, just tell him, I'm not sure, let me look that up, or let me come back to you on that one. And my final piece of advice to you is this. If you fail, you can always retest. No employer is ever going to know what you failed unless you tell them. There's no record for it. It's just once you're done, here is your A and P license. If you fail, you have to wait to retest. Or if you don't want to wait, you can get signed off by somebody who holds the certificate you are seeking. So if you're going for an A, you just need somebody who has an airframe certificate to retrain you and sign off that they have satisfactorily retrained you in the section you failed and you can go back and retest that day. We've had students go to a DME and miss a section or miss something and fail and go across the street to the hangar across the street where the D where the DME knows the mechanics got retrained real quick by one of the mechanics there and then walked right back in and retested the same day if you went through a far part 147 school you should be adequately prepared for the test but sometimes failures happen because you get nervous or something like that don't sweat it. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean you don't get to be an a &P. You can retest. You can get signed off to retest sooner. I think, in my personal opinion, that's why so many people find the prep school avenue uh, so beneficial. Because if you go to a prep school or a crash course, they guarantee you'll pass the test. And what that actually means is that if you fail, they'll retrain you and pay for your retesting so that you continue testing that same day. So there you go, everybody. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like. If you think there's something I should add to the list or you would like to put your input, feel free to drop a comment below. Subscribe, and as always, be easy.